So this is the Maqam Ibrahim, and usually you perform your Salah somewhere here. You will be able to see the Maqam Ibrahim from a distance, and it's in front of the Kaaba. So you pray your two rakats, Surah Al Kafirun and Qulu Allahu Ahad, and these two rakats are wajib, except in the crude times. One should now proceed to drink Zamzam Rud. So this is a Sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that after Maqam Ibrahim, he used to go and drink Zamzam Rud. One should drink to that hill. Before there used to be a well where you used to be able to go down. Now there's no well, there's lots of drums and there's lots of taps around there. So you drink from there. Face the Kaaba and beside the Masnoon Dua. This is one of the Duas that's Masnoon when you drink Zamzam. Allahumma inni yasaluka ilma nafi'a wa risqa wasi'a wa shifa'a 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 as Ibn Abbas used to say that if you pray, make a dua at the Multazam, it is accepted. So this is a place where the dua is accepted, so you should try and make dua at the Multazam. After drinking the Zamzam, one should go in line with the Hajar al-Aswad again and do Istilam on the way to Safa. So you've done Eight times you have kissed Hajar al-Aswad. You've prayed your two rakats behind Maqam Ibrahim and now you're coming back towards Safa. Safa is opposite Hajar al-Aswad. So if that was Hajar al-Aswad, you prayed your salah somewhere over there. Once you prayed your salah over there, then you will be coming back towards this side. Yeah. Opposite Hajar al-Aswad. Because Safa is over here. So once you are coming towards Safa, just as you are climbing the stairs, going towards Safa, you face towards Hajar al-Aswad and you kiss it one more time. This is the ninth time. Eight you did during Tawaf, and one going towards Safa, this is the Sunnah of the Prophet okay. One more kiss towards Hajar al-Aswad. One will then head towards the Safa uh, hill, which is located in the Masa, in the place where you do the Sa'i, opposite to Hajar al-Aswad. One will proceed to the Safa, Hill ensuring one is standing on the slight inclination of Safa. So where is so that's the black uh Hajar Aswad is there and opposite there is Safa. So you will read your salah somewhere here and then you will walk towards here and as you are uh, just climbing the stairs here, you will turn towards the Hajar Aswad, you will kiss it one more time, which is the ninth time, and then you will carry on and you will come towards Safa, over here. And this is uh, one of the pictures. Um, this might be in the ground or in the basement. Actually, it could be where Safa is. So you see these people, they are now facing the car. So you come up towards, up to here where Safa starts, and you will then face towards the Kaaba. And you will make dua. And you will make intention that I am going to make sa'i for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are many duas which are, you will find again in the in the kitabs. Um, one of the things that have been mentioned, inna as-safa wal marwata min sha'ahi lillah wa man hajj al-bayta wa i'tabana fala jinaha alayhi ayyattawwa khabihima that when you um, go to Safa, then there are there's a verse in the Quran, Inna as safa wal marwata min sha'a'i lillah. Surah Baqarah, verse number 158. Surah Baqarah, verse number 158. So if you, uh, you should read that verse. Also, you say Allahu Akbar three times. Say Allahu Akbar three times. إِنَّ الصَّفَاءَ وَالْمَرْوَةَ مِنْ شَعَاءِ اللَّهِ فَمَنْ حَجَّ الْبَيْتَ وَيَتَّمَرَ فَلَا جُنَاهَ عَلَيْهِ أَيَّا اللَّهُ وَفَرْهِيمًا So Surah Baqarah, verse number 158 And then, Allah Akbar three times Say, La ilaha illallah Read the fourth kalima And then there's other du'as as well And after you've read the du'as, you make du'a towards the Kaaba This is a place where the du'a is accepted This is a place where the du'a is accepted so you make lots of du'a, make lots of du'a, and then you will start your sa'i. 
So from performing the two rakats, you will come towards Safa, you will climb the small inclination, and you will face towards the car. You will face, and you will find a spot where you will be able to see the car. And then you read this uh, verse of the Quran. If you can, if you if you don't know the verse, it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that your sight is not accepted. It's just these are some of the duas which are sun. So if you know the duas, you read the duas, then you make your own dua. This is a place where dua is accepted. Once you make lots of dua, then you will stop your walk. And your walk starts from where here, Safa. Where Safa starts. From where will you walk? Make intention of Sa'i. Oh Allah, I am making Sa'i of Umrah or Hajj, whichever it is. Make it easy for me and accept it for me. Face the Kaaba when you recite the verse and you will say that Allah, the la ilaha illa the big one. Now start your Sa'i towards Marwa. When the green light approaches, a male should run, jog until the next green light. And this is where you will walk. So you will start from here. So from here you made your dua, you looked at the Kaaba, and then you start walking on your right hand side. So this is going this way, and the left hand side is coming that way. So you will move toward your right hand side, and you will start going. And when you come to the green light, there's a green light here, and there's a green light here. So in between these two green lights, you have to run and jog. Only the men, not the women. And then you stop here, then you carry on walking. It's about 420 meters from Safa to Marwa. Once you get to Marwa, that is one round done. There was one person, he came back so late, so late, so late. He said, what took you too long? He said, oh, how did you get back to me? And then it turned out that he, he thought one round was one, one. So he did Safa and Marwa, and Marwa to Safa, one. So he did 14 rounds. So obviously he was knackered. Yeah? So Safa to Marwa is one. Then again you face towards Kaaba. And you do exactly what you did here, you make dua. From here you will not be able to see the Kaaba. You just face towards the Kaaba. And you make dua. After making dua, then you start walking towards Safa. When you come to the green lights, you run again. And then you carry on and you get to Safa. Safa, you make dua again. That's two rounds done. Then after making dua, you start again, start walking towards Maru. Three rounds done. You make dua here. Three rounds done. You make dua here. Four rounds done. Five, six, and you finish at Maru. Again, you make dua, and that is your Sa'i complete. Okay? So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you finish at Maru. Once you finished here, your Sa'i is complete. According to Imam Abu Hanifa, it's Mustahab to read two rakats after Sa'i as well. Other scholars do not mention it. So, whether you want to read it, it's up to you. Women will not run between the two green lights. When a person reaches Marwa, he has completed one lap. At Marwa, one will again face towards the Qibla and say, Allahu Allah, 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 and then make dua. After making dua, one will walk towards Safa, one will repeatedly, uh, one will carry on doing this until he finishes the seventh lap from Safa to Marwa. One, what should you read whilst you are doing Sa'i? One should engage in zikr and dua. If Salah starts or one needs to take a break, it is permissible to continue from where one falls. You don't have to start again. It is not necessary to have wudu when performing sa'i. Sa for tawaf, wudu is necessary. For sa'i, wudu is not necessary. In fact, if a woman is in menstruation, so sometimes um, a woman, she needs to get her tawaf done quickly. If she does her tawaf and then menstruation starts, she can still perform her sa'i because it's not a condition. It's outside the masjid, and she is able to perform the sa'i without any penalty. Then, you, if you are doing hajjah tamattu, you are going to come out of your umrah, so you will shave or cut your hair. If you are doing tiran, then you will not cut your hair. If you are doing hajjah ifrad, you will not cut your hair. Understood? Because the person who is in tiran, he will remain in ihram, so no cutting of hair. The person who is in hajj ifrad, they will remain in ihram, there is no cutting of hair. The person who is doing tamattu, they will be coming out of the ihram, so to come out of the ihram, they need to cut the hair. Okay? So how much hair should be cut? Shaving the head is better than trimming the hair. All the hair of the head should be shaved or trimmed. So you can't just take three pieces of hair and cut that and that's it. All of the head, either you trim it, or you shave. 
one or the other. And trimming should be at least one fingertip length. Trimming should be at least one fingertip length. So if you have less than one fingertip length, then you either have the machine or you have the blade, one or the other. If you have less than one fingertip length, then you have the machine or you have the blade. A woman must only cut an inch on her hair, one fingertip length and no more. So she takes all her hair from here and she cuts one fingertip length. Okay. Once a person cuts his or her hair, they are free from the laws of ihram and the Umrah is Okay. Now, if you finish the tawaf, the sa'i, are you allowed to cut your own hair? Yes, you are. Although normally in ihram, you're still in ihram, but because you've done the main part of the ihram, you are allowed to cut your own hair. You are allowed to cut your wife's hair as well. Okay? Because that part you can do because you've done the tawaf and you've done the same. It's better if somebody else cuts it, but you are allowed and there is no pain. Those who are performing Hajj al Quran or Hajj al should not cut hair and will remain in the Haram. Umrah is now complete. Be grateful for the opportunity and spend the rest of the time usefully till the time of Okay? So you will finish your Umrah, but three days, four days, five days, ten days before Hajj. It doesn't mean that the ten days are now holiday. No. You are, you should be very conscious of the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you the opportunity to come to Makkah. Every single salah should be in Masjid al -Haram. How many times more is it? Sorry? 100,000 times. 100,000. One salah, one salah. You can't Catch that salah again. There are lots of people who, because they go every year, you will see them staying in the hotel. Don't copy them. Don't think bad of them as well. You make dua like you said, okay. You shouldn't think bad of anyone. But what you have to make sure is that you spend your time properly. You are in Makkah to Mukarrama, one of the holiest places on earth, or if you are in Medina Munawara, wherever you are, you make sure 100,000 salah, you do not miss. With jama'ah, every single salah, with jama'ah. Now, if you are staying in Shisha or Aziziyah, which some of you might be, then you try and get to Makkah for Zohan and stay there in Isha. Fajr you might not be able to reach because it's too far. But go there for Zohan and come back to Isha time. Eat there, rest there, do everything there. But at least try to be four salah there. It's very possible. Very possible. Okay? Any questions? Inshallah, we'll take him at five minutes. Um, I guess we can cover about three questions. So if you've got a question, raise your hands, please. You've said that you can cut your own hair. Uh, you've said that you can cut your own hair. Like I said, it's better for somebody else to cut the hair. Uh, sorry, cut the hair. But if you do it yourself or somebody else who's just finished their sa'i, does it? then there's no penalty. That's what I'm trying to say. It's allowed. One is allowed to cut your own hair. And this is from the hadith of the Prophet The Prophet didn't cut his own hair. Somebody else cut it. But if one does it, then there's no penalty. Yeah. If you look at the wording of the hadith, it mentions that you are allowed to cut your own hair. It doesn't directly say you cut your hair. But from the wording,